Greetings from Tokyo. I'm Trip, and welcome to the Hammer of Wrath. This week, you and I are going to paint some Sith Krons. Let's go. Thanks for joining me in the studio, and this week we are going to scramble to finish our 9th edition Indomitus Box Necrons before 10th edition launches. But before we do that, I want to take a brief second to talk about the convenience stores in Japan, or Konbini as they are known. Because again, everything in Japan has to be shorter. There are several chains of convenience stores all throughout Japan, but the three big ones are 7-Eleven, Lawson, and Famima, or Family Mart. The one you might have recognized there is 7-Eleven. They have those all over the world, but let me tell you right now, Japanese 7-Eleven is, uh, different. All the convenience stores in Japan are different in that they are clean, well-staffed, well-lit, safe, and have delicious food in them. Now, it's likely that where you're from, the cultural joke is that if you eat something from the convenience store, that's a one-way ticket to food poisoning. But in Japan, it's vastly different. In fact, it's not uncommon for them to be very crowded in the run-up to lunchtime, as everyone tries to grab the daily, freshly made bento, or traditional Japanese box lunches, that are available. You can get anything from ramen all the way to katsukuri, onigiri, or fresh sushi. And it's absolutely delicious. Now beyond that, of course, they have a massive drink selection in the back, where you can get canned beverages, soda, water, sports drinks, even canned cocktails. Now, the last thing about the convenience store is it also serves as a sort of social hub for the neighborhood. It's not uncommon to see a convenience store every few blocks, and the neighbors from that area often congregate there on a Friday or Saturday evening as they catch up after work or have a drink outside. And yes, it's perfectly legal to crack open a beer just outside the convenience store, sit on the stoop, and catch up with friends. Honestly, it's sort of spoiled me, and the few times I return to America, the state of convenience stores there is just... appalling. That's enough of me fawning about Japanese convenience stores. Let's talk about this week's video, and we are rushing to complete the Necrons from the 9th edition box Indomitus, which I've had on sprue for three years. They are absolutely incredible sculpts, a perfect reimagining of the Necron line, and I always intended to paint them, but they weren't a top priority for me. But a few months ago, I posted a video, as shown in the corner here and linked in the description below, in which I asked the internet to choose my Necron scheme. I proposed a more traditional scheme on one hand, and a darker, more sinister scheme on the other hand, which the internet quickly dubbed Sithcrons. And let me tell you, the voting was in the majority for the Sithcrons. So, in order to complete the 9th edition box before the 10th edition box launches, we're going to speed paint some Sithcrons. Let's get started. I started, of course, by snipping out the miniatures from the sprues using my side cutters and assembling them with Tamiya Thin. Now, these are designed to be push fit miniatures, which means you don't necessarily need to use glue with them, which is great for a beginner, but Honestly, the sets, they really aren't made for beginners. I, I don't know why they do this. The Necron half of the Indomitus box uh, poses a sort of special challenge in that a lot of the models are really spindly because they are robot skeletons. Many of the limbs and weapons coming off these things are actually really delicate. And if you're not careful, it's easy to bend or break the parts as you're assembling them. I know how I'm going to base my army, but I have this base left over from the Heroic Bases set that I bought almost 10 years ago, and it's going to be perfect for the Canoptic Reanimator. So I very carefully clipped off what was there on the base already, and knowing that one of the legs has a pegged hole to help it stand, I drilled a hole in the Heroic Base. Once I've got everything assembled, I'm going to move to the next step, which is priming. Here I'm using an airbrush and Vallejo black primer. It's an exceptional primer. Not only does it look good through the airbrush though, but you can actually brush this primer on as well and it keeps all the details. It's exceptional however you use it. With the army fully primed, it was time to do our first major step, which was to airbrush a Zenithal highlight of Lead Belcher and Black mixed one to one. This is going to give us the base for our Sith Krons. I then blasted every Necron on the chest with the airbrush and Vallejo Bloody Red, and then using that one-to-one -one black and lead belcher, simply dry brushed back over the skeletons, 
covering the armor but leaving the red in the recesses. This is a fun and easy way to make the models look like they're glowing with an energy from the inside. I then simply dry brushed Canoptic Alloy over every Necron in the set. Now the trick here is not to be too heavy handed. We still want them to look darker than normal Necrons. And once that's all set, it's time to move on to the glowing effects. Watch this, right into the eye. It looks awful, it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, but trust me, this is gonna pay off in a minute. Same thing here on the barrel. Doesn't matter if a little gets over the edge, that's gonna become a glow. So we just cover all the parts we want to be red with this white. And once that's dry, we come in with contrast blood angels and then apply it generously all over where the white paint was. Look at this, boom, instant eye glow. Same thing for the power coils here. We're just gonna put that on, let the contrast do what it does, settle into the recesses and make shadows, pull away from the highlights, and it looks fantastic when applied over the cable. Then we go through with a little orange and a little yellow to do some spot highlights, and we have this incredible three-stage glow on everything. Now, as far as the bases go, I've decided that we need a lighter color base to offset the darker Necrons. These guys are gonna be marching through an endless desert, and I'm using Games Workshop's Agrelin Earth. This is a texture paste, you apply it on thick. The thicker you apply it, the bigger cracks you're gonna get, and I let all of them sit overnight to fully dry. While the rest of the army's bases are drying, we're gonna move on to that heroic base that we pulled out for the Canoptic Reanimator. Here I'm just using the airbrush to apply some Xandri dust. And once I've got that fully covered, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to a wash. This is a one-to-one -one combination of Seraphim Sepia and Agrax Earthshade. I just apply that generously across the entire model. I'm working my brush around, making sure that it's not pooling, and we let it fully dry. Once that's dry about half an hour later, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna dry brush again with Xandri Dust, and then a second dry brush with Carrick Stone. That's gonna bring out all of our highlights and edges. And then we get to start weathering. Here I'm taking a sponge and some Mornfang Brown, and I'm just gonna start stippling that all over the model. This is gonna hit all of our high points, now this base already has some sculptural details in it, but we want it to match the rest of the army. So over top of that, I'm just gonna apply a really thick layer of Agrelin Earth to get those same cracks. Here I'm highlighting the orbs on the reanimator. I could have broken out the airbrush again, done some flawless gradients, but honestly, I thought it'd be a lot more fun to use a brush technique. So instead of trying to get a flawless gradient, I'm gonna try and capture like a sense of energy within these orbs, like almost like they're filled with fireflies. Now, once everything underneath is done, I'm gonna go ahead and glue on the armor carapace on top and then fill in these vents. I don't need to be neat here. I know I'm gonna paint this over top. I use a white and then a red. I'm gonna work in some oranges as well to create a fiery gradient. And once that's all set, I'm just gonna use that combination of black and lead belcher and then paint over the carapace here. Because the recesses are so deep, it's actually easy to brush over them and not get anything into the recesses and ruin the work we've done. And once that's dry, like the rest of the armor, dry brush with canoptic alloy. Now on some of the HQ units, there's some ornamentation. I know that in a lot of dynasties, these are gold. This is just not something that's gonna fit our theme. We wanna stay monochromatic and sort of desaturated except for those punches of red. So we're gonna use canoptic alloy. And then we'll shade that with some Nuln oil. And then moving on to the glowing parts here. Again, we're gonna use that Troll Slayer orange and some yellows to bring out the highlights in the orbs. And then this turned out better than I had hoped. The sort of glowing guts will highlight those as well. And of course, the tubes that's sort of siphoning that energy off from their central cores into their weapons. We want to match our color scheme here. We're going to paint that white. Then we're going to put that Blood Angels contrast over top and then hit that with a Troll Slayer orange and a yellow for the highlights. Several of the models have hyperphase blades, and instead of simply using the airbrush for some gradients, I, for whatever reason, decided I was going to torture myself and hand glazed every blade. So this is just, a, to be honest, a lot of work. There's not a whole lot to it. It's simply a base of red, in this case, Vallejo Bloody Red. And then I start mixing that red with a Troll Slayer Orange and glazing on layer after layer, allowing the paint to slowly build up to create these gradients. It's not a difficult concept, it just takes an exceptional amount of patience, but there's no arguing with the results. Once I had finished the Necromancer, I realized that I had three more Scorpec Destroyers, a Scorpec Lord, and an Overlord to do. So there was nothing to do but to do it, 
and I sat down for an entire afternoon using red, troll slayer orange, yellow, and bloody red, painstakingly glazing the blades for hours on end, slowly building my highlights and shadows. Now I want the power cores on these to glow an almost white hot yellow, and the trick here is two things. One, putting a gloss coat over the blade, and two, using a white ink. The capillary action of the ink will draw it down through the spaces without ruining the gradient paint job, and then I simply cover it with a really light glaze of yellow paint. And finally, we finish the models by applying some pigment powders along their feet to make it look like they've been trudging through an endless desert for eternity. And like a Necron dynasty slowly awakening from its slumber, our Patreon community continues to grow. I want to take this opportunity to thank my patrons, our mallet bearers, Adam Fox, Love, Christopher Duran, Finn Melia, and Jay Tribbs, our sledgehammer bearers, Cody Newton, Joshua Kreba, Deep, and new member Holocrates, and of course, our thunderhammer bearers, Matt Mitchum, The Rascal, Josh Hannon, and new members, Kepley and Alistair. You guys are absolutely incredible. Thank you for your continued support. Come and join us over on Patreon. Joining at any level grants you access to our private Discord server, where we share works in progress and finish models, and help each other become better hobbyists every day with honest feedback. And there you have it, the Indomitus Necrons complete just under the wire before 10th edition launches this weekend, and I pick up my reserved Leviathan box. I hope you enjoyed the video, it was my genuine pleasure to make and share it with you. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, comment, and subscribe, drive us to the front of YouTube, and help us grow our audience. You can always check out the Patreon linked in the description below. Or check out our t-shirt shop, bakingsodatees.com, where we sell one-of-a-kind, unique designs available nowhere else. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you on the next one.